I'm going crabbing tomorrow, but you don't necessarily have to do this the day before you go crabbing. You could do this a week before, you could do this months before if you want to, but doing this before you get on the boat saves a lot of time. So what I'm doing here, I've got all my bait bags and I'm just loading them up, loading them up with whatever bait I got. <laughs> Look at that. We got chicken and we got this for $4.99 for 10 pounds. I'll wash this knife later so we don't get salmonella. So we're gonna fish eight traps tomorrow. And if you're prone to seasickness, this is gonna help a lot. It's gonna minimize about 60% of the time that you're gonna to have to be looking down, baiting these things up. So once I do have them all in their bags, just put them in the bags, put them in your freezer, and they'll be frozen. Once you get them, dump them in the water, they'll have a nice slow thaw, and they'll start getting that scent out in the water two hours later should have limits. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna pick up Calvin, and after we pick Calvin up, hopefully we get the crab, and after that, he's gonna cook Singaporean crab. I've never had it before, but I've heard so many rave reviews about it. This is gonna be, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. This is gonna be good, this is gonna be fun. See you on the water tomorrow, and we're gonna pick up Calvin. I'm getting gas right now, filling up the boat, and one thing I always try to make sure before I get to the ramp is to have the drain plug in. But that's our setup. Eight crab traps, eight 160 foot coils of rope, and we're gonna be fishing about 120 feet today. Oh, I forgot to mention that this is the first boat video that I've done in a couple months, and I had it at a shop, Real Custom Boat Works, and I picked it up the other day. This is what we had done to it. Good to see you. Bring a hitch? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's been about three months since I've been on this boat and there's been a few problems. I didn't want to take it out on the water. Uh, we'll go into it in a second, but I brought it out here to Real Custom Boat Works. This is Jim. Morning. I first met Jim through YouTube, through Chris P. Fish. He made a video and worked on Chris's boat. And uh, Jim's been out to the Fisherman's Life Street Fair. I met him at the Sportsman's Expo in Sacramento also. Great guy, he's never worked on my boat before, but from other people's stuff and from his Instagram page, it seems like he does an awesome job. Well, first thing that happened to the boat was after taking many people on it, the windshield was coming a little loose. So that was the main thing. So <laughs> yeah. That was pretty loose, right? It was very loose, yeah, it separated from the fiberglass. Yeah. So we took the framing work off, re-screwed it in, oh, yeah. and then put an epoxy on there. Oh, nice. So it's as solid oh, yeah. as it can be. Just Second thing, the reason it was separated from the fiberglass was because obviously people hold on to it in waves. So yep. I took the boat over to one of the fabricators and we had a little grab handle uh, installed up there so they can hold on to it. <laughs> yeah, so I knew after fixing the windshield, I didn't want the same thing to happen. So I had an idea, just put a little grab bar on here. And man, this thing looks beefy. Let's check, check this out. <laughs> oh, that'll be nice. Just a little more security and stability. A little stability. more security, a little less using your windshield as your grab, grab handle. <laughs> yeah. Fixed the uh, hatches, so now. Whoa, whoa, dang. Wow, look at that. It's like a whole tackle room in here. Yeah, before there was nothing here at all. I just had a bucket with some life jackets and stuff, but man. That's really gonna clear up the deck a lot. All right, so Jim is in Stockton, Real Custom Boat Works. Yes, if you sir. need any work done, he's your guy. Quality work. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Had a lot of fun doing it. Yep. All appreciate right, it, man. Limits. Limits. Oh man, you don't get days like this too often. Look at this sunrise. I'm just here getting the straps off the boat, getting everything ready, but look at the parking lot too. There's barely any cars here. And for how flat calm it is out, that's why it pays to come out on a weekday if you can. Avoid the crowds on the weekends if possible, because if it was a weekend, there would be a line backed up all the way to the shops right now. Double, triple checking that drain plug. I'll always make sure there's been two times where I forgot to put that drain plug in. Came back to the boat after launching it and the bottom is starting to fill with water. Always have a torpedo weight that can fit into the drain plug as a spare. That's what saved me that day.
just launched it and if you're at Half Moon Bay it costs about $16 every time you launch to park the trailer but I get the yearly pass this one expires July 2023 costs about $220 so if you launch a lot this is good at Half Moon Bay and San Mateo you don't have to pay for anything anymore So Calvin's taking us out of the harbor. It's so calm today that I could probably bait everything as we make the run up to Pacifica. But right now I'm just getting the crab puller up. After I do that, I'm gonna load up the, the nets with the bait. I'm not expecting too much for fishing, but after we drop the pots, we're gonna fish for about an hour, maybe two. And it's gonna be so much nicer back here once the deck is cleared of all these traps. Let's hope everything is not super corroded and hopefully this still works. There we go. All right, we're in action. Man, it feels so good to be back on the water. All right, we're making a wide turn around the buoy and we're headed up north. Yeah, it's gotta be at least two or three months since I've been out here. Should be calm enough to cruise at 25, maybe even 30. Man, it's a little bit more choppy than I was thinking, honestly. But we're out here about 120 feet. So just throw that in the water. And then I'll put us in forward and we'll get all that line out. This just helps a little bit with line management when you let the line go out first. That way you don't throw the net over and then everything gets tangled up and you gotta pull the net back up. Yep, cool. All right, first one in, I'll mark that spot. And now we're gonna go maybe maybe 200 yards. The water looks clear today, so I got the underwater camera. Let's see what we can capture. This is one of the buoys that I'm using today. I got my name and my number and my go ID on it. But these bigger ones, if it's really rough, the current is strong, the wind is strong, these are so buoyant that they can pull up the crab trap and make it walk. So on a really rough day, if you're using these and your traps are missing, you might have to go looking for them. All right, number three. Mark it. Number four. Mark it. This is number five. Yeah. Man, it was supposed to be 1.5 foot swell today. Zero wind, maybe like three miles an hour wind, but the swell looks about right. But man, the wind is like 14. And the, look, it's just white caps everywhere. Might not look that bad on video, but and we can't go more than like 10, 12 miles per hour. It's, it's kind of nasty out here. Ay, ay, number six. Okay. Yep. All right, number seven. All right, last one, number eight. Now our dilemma is that it's way rougher than we thought, and if we go into fish, it's about a 20 minute drive going fast. Coming back out here, it's gonna be like 45 minutes in this nasty chop. Well, since it's such an easy ride in, we're gonna go fish and if any if it's anything like yesterday it's going to calm down a lot in the afternoon so uh just fingers crossed that happens and we'll be back out here in an hour and a half to check the pots so much nicer in here. I think when we go back out to the crabbing grounds, we're gonna stay close to shore, past the spot when we go north, 
and then we'll wind back around so we don't have to fight the waves. But just look at this compared to what it was. Back to being glassy, flat, cruising at 23. Doesn't even seem like it though. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. So we made it to the spot. We're gonna start fishing. We're about 70 to 85 feet deep. I got Navionics up and I'm going to start our tracking. And this is gonna tell us what direction we're drifting and then we will be able to go right back over to the same spot. Now it looks like it's calm enough where I can drop down the spoon. So Calvin's gonna drop down a day one jig, 150 gram glow dot. Oh yeah, that, that one right there. And then I'll tie on the literal spoon. So let's get that set up right here. All right, we're doing a bet, I guess, apparently. Uh, whoever catches the first fish has to buy each other boba. Calvin's <laughs> tipping his jig with some shrimp. And I got the spoon. Let's go with the spoon. All right, let's go, ready? Let's go. Drifting slowly, 93 feet over a reef that I've never fished before. This is the Fisherman's Life jigging rod too, if you didn't know, I had those as well. All right, 88 feet, coming up to 75. You're probably gonna get one because you have bait. It's cheating. Calvin caught one. Yeah, you can just throw it in there, copper. All right, I owe him some boba. All right, so you caught first fish. Yeah. Let's do biggest fish. Biggest fish? Okay. Biggest fish, double or nothing? Uh, that? How's that work? If you catch the biggest also, then I'll buy you two bobas. I'll give you one. <laughs> <laughs> first drop here, dude. Uh oh, you're on two. Yes, we found a good spot. Oh, yeah, Calvin's on a good one, too. Woo! First drop. This thing didn't even hit the bottom. What is this thing here? Lingcod? Nice. Keeper? Oh no, <laughs> small. Oh, well, this is a good sized rockfish. Keep this one. Is mine still considered the biggest? Actually, yeah, yours looks pretty chunky. Uh, no. Uh, I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good one. We're on a reef and there's just like hundreds of different areas we could choose so just hop into different rock pilings and seeing which one looks the best yeah we're passing the spot right now yeah i'm on to this one feels a little bit this one feels decent yeah. all right this is a brown rockfish on the spoon you could tell it's a brown rockfish it's got that dark patch on his cheek so we'll keep him there yeah this, yeah two two all right Boon is doing his work. So this is a seven foot jigging rod. It's rated from two to eight ounces. I should have changed the rating. It's more like two, well, I guess you could fish eight if you're jigging. So yeah, that's pretty accurate. Short enough for a boat, really lightweight, good weapon to have in your arsenal. So fishermanslife.net if you wanna, oh, I thought that was a big fish. That's how it looks when you're snagged. See the bend in it? Good action. Yeah, pretty good. Got it free. Nice rod, fishermanslife.net if you want to get one. Got spinning and casting versions. Sometimes drifting over the spot is so important. The spot could maybe be a 15 foot wide rock. Just like if you're fishing from shore, you see the rock, you got to fish around it. So it's kind of the same. If you got technology, you can use your Navionics, you can use Google Maps sometimes. Search for that rock. When you find one, make sure you mark it and keep drifting over it. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a lingcod right there. Yeah, yeah. On the spoon, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, this is either a big lingcod or a cabazon. Oh, this is nice. Maybe even a halibut because there is some sand around here. But I think I might have to take the gaff out. Dang. It's a lingcod I hooked on the tail. Man, let's see if I can just pull this up because... I mean, legally, you're not supposed to keep these... If you hook them in the tail, but check that out. I don't know how he got hooked. <laughs> so that's a keeper lingcod, but its stomach is so full and it's breeding season. If I feel it and it doesn't feel like a fish, I'm just gonna let it go. 
that is a perfect size. That's probably about 24 inches, but full of eggs. Just let him, let her have more babies. It's the finals, man. We're tied 2-2. Who's going to get the most fish and who's going to get the bigger one? So far, Calvin has the first fish and I have the biggest fish and we're tied for most fish. That lingcod doesn't count because we released it and I hooked it in the tail. Calvin's in the lead with the most fish and he's on again. Ooh, there's a nice fish. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice one. Another one. Oh, that's a link. Oh, it came, oh, it came off. No, he's still there. Oh, maybe it just went back onto his tail. But that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. What is this? This is bigger than the other link cod. Oh, come on up, man. Woo! Oh, he's on some sea... On a, on a, the jellyfish, I think. That's, the, that's what it is. I was pulling up the jellyfish. But yeah, these rods, I've got them for sale right now for $120. And of course, free shipping. So free shipping over anything over 50 bucks. Oh, that's a link odd. No. Is it a keeper though? I think that's a keeper. Woo! Nice, on the spoon. So I got the biggest, you got the most, and the first. I'll take a link odd all day. 24 inches, and this one, Nothing in the belly, good size, male probably, I'll cut his gills, and bleed him out in the water. Yeah, I'm pretty good for a brand new spot. Two lingcod and probably eight to ten rockfish. Day one jig outperformed the spoon, but I think the spoon caught the quality fish. Now let's go get some crab. Hopefully there's crab out there. I never fished that spot either. And also, instead of heading straight towards the swell, the swell is coming from the northwest. So we went north, straight north, close to shore where it was calm, and then we wound around. So we're gonna pick up the last pot first and then just work our way in easy so we don't have to fight the swell, fight the wind, fight everything. We're just gonna go with the waves and the current. So we're coming up on our first one right now. All right, we're just gonna start this, here we go. All right, here we go. First trap feels pretty light. If we can average two to three crab per pot, we'll have limits. This is a two, two hour soak right now. Let's see what we got, 120 feet deep. All right, got color. I see something in there. There's some crab in there. Any jumbos though. Woo, look at that. Uh, yeah, a couple, oh, some rock crab. That's not a good sign. Yeah, this keeper. One, that's a nice one. Okay, that's keeper two. All right, two keepers, happy with that. It was giant rock crab. Man, that thing is huge. Yeah, good start, two keeper dungies. All right. all right, as Calvin pulls it up, I'm just gonna organize all these lines so we don't have to do it later. We're not dropping them down. Even if we don't get limits, we're gonna stop. Anything? The heck? Keep that rock crab? Yeah. Damn, rock crab, wrong spot. Hopefully we get a little farther and there's no rocks or, ah, shoot. Three dungeons though, not too bad. All right, here we go, number three. Loaded, huh? With small ones. Oh man, maybe one keeper in there too. And this one looks like keeper for sure. Five, oh this one, measure that. Yeah. Oh yeah, all right, cool. All right, six keepers, not bad. Three on that pole, take it. All right, something like this, that makes it worth it. Big old crab right there. Seven incher, crab number seven. All right, we got four more, four more to go.
one keeper. Take it. Giant amount of crabs in here. Damn. I see two keepers. Maybe three. Well, we got at least a keeper every pull. I think we ended up with 12 or 13, something like that. We'll do our final count. We'll get back into the harbor, clear out all this bait from the crab pots, and then go and, I'm hungry, man. Are you hungry? This is gonna be good. So we just finished crabbing, and what better way to have a meal right after you're done? So Calvin's setting up the cook station, propane grill, couple bottles of water and we got all the ingredients here so I'm gonna hand the mic off to Calvin and he'll explain how to cook this Singapore chili crab we're gonna go ahead and boil the crab it's about 80% and then later we're gonna simmer the crab all right, we're gonna do one crab each so I'm gonna pull one out of here hopefully they don't pinch me let's see if I can get one man big rock crab let's get these out of the way oh he's pinched he's trying to grab me probably doesn't like that I don't think I would like that either all right. Ooh, look how clean he is. Look at those lungs right there. So we're gonna peel these off so we don't have to do this after. And with this crab, I don't even think we need to really scrub it. It's like so clean already. But I am gonna take the mouth off. So you guys know already the crab butter has the higher levels of domoic acid. So just to keep this dish clean, we're gonna take all that stuff out. I ate it in my last video, but not gonna eat it in this video. And a lot of people are probably crying saying that this is the best part. I know, I know, but I don't wanna die. Just break them in half, like shake those things out. And that's pretty much clean. Right, just so we get some more of that flavoring into the meat, I'm gonna crack these crab shells. I'm gonna crack the legs of the crab shell. I'd probably add like five tablespoons at least. We're trying to match the salinity of the seawater by adding salt to the boiling water. All right, got the water boiling. Let's put some crab in there now. All right, boiling for about 10 minutes. So it's 80%. It's 220, we'll stop it at 230. So this is pretty much the base of the chili sauce. Uh, it contains garlic, shallot, ginger, and Thai chili peppers. This is shrimp paste. It gives it a good umami flavor. You're gonna need a form of tomato so I have ketchup and also a little tomato paste. And we also have some Thai sweet chili sauce. A little sugar if we need to make it a little bit sweeter. Corn starch here to thicken the sauce up. Um, and of course, you gotta have some egg in there. Green scallion here to garnish the dish. Man, look at all that lobster scum. That is why I like to pre-cook it first. Okay, about 80%. This right here is probably one of the most important parts of the recipe. Garlic, shallot, ginger, and Thai chili peppers ground up into kind of a paste, minced basically, in a food processor. It's like three tablespoons. Mm. Kind of sweet and tangy, kind of. Smells so good. Garlic, shallot, ginger, and Thai chilies. So for that shallot garlic mix, you want a little bit more shallot, equal parts ginger and garlic, and then depending on the spice level you want, that's how much of the Thai chilies you'd put in there. And he's just extracting some of the flavor right now, throwing that in there. Tomato paste added in, little sugar. So added water. Just gonna simmer this and then throw the crab back in there and have it cook the remaining 20%. And that's just about all the ingredients. Only thing left is the cornstarch. Is that to thicken it up if we need to? And then also the egg at the end. Oh, cornstarch, egg, and then a little bit of the green, uh, green onion. Been simmering for about five minutes now. Good thing about crab, you can cook it and let it cool and then reheat it again later anytime you want. So that blended mix, we're just talking about it now. And we're thinking the main thing should be shallots and then garlic and then ginger, a little bit less than garlic, and then the Thai chilies. Yeah, to taste for the chilies. Grab back in, let it simmer for a couple minutes.
All right, nothing like a meal right off the boat. Right after cooking, didn't even clean the boat yet. All right, man. Thanks for cooking, bro. Yeah, anytime. Thanks, man. Thanks for taking me out. Of course. All right, let's dig in. Mmm. It doesn't taste that gingery anymore, right? No. Oh, this is a messy dish, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is pretty good, dude. I like it. Usually, I only eat crab with butter, and there's no butter in this. Ooh, if you like spice, yeah, this is, is spicy. this is a good one. Oops, kind of feel like I'm in a restaurant right now. Now, next time I go to PPQ or some some restaurant, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll order this and see what I think. Then I'll come out and see if I can make it myself next time. It'll be a fun video. Yeah. Sometimes, no matter what I'm eating, whether it's now Singapore Thai chili, chili, uh, or just with butter or just anything else I like to take all the crab out of the shell just put it on the side then you can just enjoy it all one big bite man this is really good thanks again bro mm -hmm. see you on the basketball court cool. yep all right thanks finish this up and head home been a long day but it was a good day glad we went Very out there successful. Mm -hmm.